Welcome back to This Week in Bevy. Bevy Jam 5 is underway, and if you haven't joined in yet, you still have a whole week to work on a game, so head on over to itch.io to join the jam. We've got a whole bunch to cover this week, including some exciting crate releases that, if you ask me, were motivated by the Bevy Jam number 5, and a number of full open source games and releases. We'll start off as usual covering some project ongoings and merges before getting deeper into the ecosystem and even seeing a 3D editor for Mario Kart Wii tracks. So let's kick it off with Observers. Observers are brand new in Bevy 0.14, but their implementation in that release is considered more of the first implementation. With that in mind, we're already starting to see Observers evolve further with things like event bubbling. 13.991 introduced the idea that events can propagate up and the Observers can listen to them. In this case, events are propagating up through a specific component, in this case, parent, which is Bevy's built-in hierarchy component. And this is a very exciting change. But it's not the only observer change. We also got on replaced. In addition to on add, on insert, and on remove, on replaced joins both component hooks and observer triggers. Bringing observers more in line with regular systems, observer systems can now have an out parameter. This fixes an issue where you previously couldn't take an observer system and pipe the output of that into another system. The unofficial Bevy meetup number five was live streamed just before the Bevy jam number five started with two talks. The first is on truck instrument clusters powered by Bevy, and the second is on Bevy Velo, which is a very exciting library in my opinion. And of course, there are many implementations of UI toolkits in progress these days, which means picking one could be one of the decisions you have to make for your game. Over the last week, a number of different toolkit authors have built out calculator examples in their framework, even including Bevy Lunix. There are a number of different examples from Halka, as you can see here, to a vanilla Bevy UI implementation in this gist, to Bevy Cobweb, and of course, also Bevy Lunix. Now you probably aren't gonna create a calculator for your game, and not all of these UI frameworks have the same goals and motivations, but it can still be useful to see the implementations in different UI frameworks so that you can make an informed choice for what works for your game. Also note that there's some good discussion from the framework authors, detailing the different approaches and priorities of crates like Sickle UI and Quill, linked to from the website. And up next, Radiance Cascades. Radiance Cascades are an interesting global illumination technique that have been gaining interest over the last few weeks after a YouTube video released talking about them. That video is exploring a new approach to realistic lighting, Radiance Cascades, by Simon Dev, which we've linked to from the site. And while that particular video was fairly recent, coming out only over the last couple weeks, the paper, which was announced in this YouTube video, was released almost a year ago. This has resulted in a ton of useful visualizations, like you can see here with additional links at the top and visualizations which are interactive, including the demo at the bottom. Of course, other people have made even fancier demos, like you can see here where they move around the lights. And of course, there are articles written about them. There's a lot of information about them these days on the internet. So definitely go check it all out if you're interested in implementing this technique. That said, this is This Week in Bevy. So we've got not one in Bevy Flatland Radiance Cascades, but two in Bevy Radiance Cascades crates that implement Radiance Cascades. And while there have also been other research level efforts over the last year, such as Bevy Ridiculous SSGI, 3D Radiance Cascades don't seem to work out as well as 2D Radiance Cascades, but the technique is great for 2D. And from rendering to a little bit more rendering, WGPU got its first major release, starting with V22, which follows on from the previous 0.21. This is notably not a stable 1.0 release, but reflects the fact that WGPU has been used in production by many projects, including Bevy, and powers the implementation of the actual web GPU APIs in Servo, Firefox, and JavaScript for Dino. So congrats to WGPU on acknowledging that fact. And starting off PRs with 14.369, which introduces a new API to enable renaming closure-based systems, which allows them to show up in tooling as a named item rather than something that looks a little bit more like this, which is just the word closure in curly braces. Imagine debugging 50 of those. This kind of thing will mostly show in dev tools like Bevy Mod Debug Dump or in tracing output, but it's really nice to be able to name things that are anonymous by nature. And next up, we've got isometries. Isometries. <laughs> 14.269 introduced the concept of an isometry type into Bevy Math. Isometries represent rigid motion, which is a technical term, in two and three dimensions such as translation and rotation, but not reflection. If you'd like to know more about them, 
Of course, check out the follow-up PR, which we're looking at here, 14318, which does include a whole bunch of extra examples and pros. It can be a little bit hard to get your head around some of these abstract mathematical concepts, so I really appreciate the examples in the docs here. And from math to more math, 14106 introduced a new trait called the cyclic cubic generator to power the generation of cyclic curves through control points. This trait is implemented for a number of different types, including cubic hermite, cubic cardinal spline, cubic B spline, and linear spline. In 14339, there's a new plugin group macro, which is a more restrictive version of building a custom plugin group, but provides some nice wins in terms of keeping documentation up to date. This is the same trait that things like default plugins and minimal plugins implement. And what would this week be without some more rendering work? 13695 introduces a new built-in post-processing shader that's designed to hold miscellaneous post-processing effects. It then continues to start with a chromatic aberration as the first effect. The effect is usable through adding chromatic aberration to your camera. This PR, as is usual with PC Walton's PRs, is well-documented, explained, and comes with a new usage example called post-processing. I highly suggest checking out this PR if you're interested in how Bevy's rendering systems work. And finally, we've got 14.099, which is localized volumetric fog. Currently in 0.14, volumetric fog is global and affects the entire scene uniformly. This is inadequate for many use cases, such as local smoke effects. To address this, this PR introduces fog volumes, which are axis-aligned bounding boxes, or AABBs, that specify fog parameters inside of their boundaries. Such volumes can also specify a density texture which is a 3D texture of voxels that specifies the density of the fog at each point. And of course, as usual, a new example called Fog Volumes has been added, which demonstrates a single fog volume containing a voxelized representation of the Stanford Bunny. The existing volumetric fog example has been updated to use the new local volumetrics API. And of course, as usual, Alice's Merge Train is a maintainer level view into active PRs, both those that are merging and those that need work. And this week was quite large with a total of 38. I know it says 35 right here on the screen, but a couple came in as she was doing this. <laughs> so it actually went up to 38. And with that, we're into showcases. Here we see a Bevy 0.14 upgrade for this RPG, which uses Avian 3D for its colliders. And Cataster is a 2D space shooter that just upgraded to Bevy 0.14 as well, and now uses features like state scoped entities and substates. Some crates used in this include AVN2D, Bevy Hanabi, and Leafwing Input Manager. This one, of course, is also open source. Up next, we've got Project Harmonia, which gained the somewhat aptly named Sandbox support. You, you can see the Sandbox here. <laughs> this was done amongst some other Bevy 0.14 refactoring efforts. Next up, we've got a desktop pet in Bevy. This one is also open source, so take a look and go make your own desktop pet. This demo shows off some pack spawning and giblets or giblets. In this thread, there was also a hidden gem for some pro tips on lighting, which includes removing the ambient light and instead adding an environment map light as well as SSAO. Alternatively, bake some light maps. And we talked a little bit about Radiance Cascades earlier in the overview. The Discord thread for this one contains a link to the extremely information rich year long thread in the graphics programming Discord if you're interested in trying to implement Radiance Cascades yourself. Until then, you can look at the output of Bevy Radiance Cascades here. And we've seen Quill before, but now we've got Quill actually compiling and rendering shaders. This is the Vortex crate in the Quill repo, where the node graph is being used to generate WGSL source code for a custom shader. There's plenty of discussion and demo code in the Discord thread, so definitely go check this one out. Up next, we've got a source-inspired FPS with modern mechanics. So far, the view model animations along with player and gun state are implemented, and there's more to come. And while not quite the intended use case vision for meshlets, this is still a very cool demo. This is sign distance functions or sign distance fields into volumes, into surface nets, into meshes, into meshlets, which you can see getting decimated by this rectangular looking object. And we've got another Steam release this week. This project was originally an effort to go through the entire dev cycle to see how viable Bevy is for more sustained projects. Due to the state it was able to achieve, it was just released on Steam. The game uses Bevy Steamworks and vanilla Bevy UI. You can see it on Steam here. Speaking of 3D, we've got an Avian 3D custom character controller. This custom character controller is built on top of Avian 3D and its shape casting. This particular example is networked, server authoritative, and currently running at 100 milliseconds ping 
with 2% packet loss. This is a work in progress crate for procedural animation using second order dynamics and inverse kinematics inspired by Tessellator. And here we can see a 3D editor for Mario Kart Wii tracks. Each course's functional data is stored in a .kmp file, which is what the program edits. Each color here represents a collision type, such as road, off-road, etc. And the gizmos are powered by Transform Gizmo. There's a lot in this video. This is a two minute long video. And then there's another two in the Discord thread going over different features of the editor. So if you're interested in this, I highly suggest going to take a look at the Discord thread and watching through those videos. The source code for this one is available on GitHub under KMPeak. And the Transform Gizmo specifically are also available under Transform Gizmo. From Wii to VR, this is a VR window manager slash desktop environment for Windows. While this is an electromagnetic wave simulator. The simulator was later updated to use UOM for units, which helps the author to bolster their understanding of what's actually going on and display that. To build a home implemented custom cursors, this cursor changes into a hand when hovering over an object you can interact with. And this work uses a UI image, but there's also an open PR over on the Bevy repo for custom cursor support at a deeper level. And at the tail end of the showcases here, we've got the Seeker game. This 2D action adventure game is being built by a group of four as an open source project. It's described as a combination of Hollow Knight and Risk of Rain 1, and there's even documentation. Why would there be documentation, you say? Because it's an open source repo that you can go look at and choose to contribute to if you so choose. There's also a nice game design document, pros documentation, as well as crate documentation. And finally, how far could you get on a Pong implementation in an hour? Here's one person's attempt. And with that, we're into crate releases. This is Beat. Beat 003 is a behavior library that uses entities to represent nodes and behavior graphs, connecting them with the parent-children relationship we all know and love. Previously, change detection was used for control flow, but this has been replaced with observers, which allow for instant graph traversal and solves what was the biggest pain point in the library previously. It's very nice to see observers being used to solve real pain points. Next up, we've got Bevy ECS Tiled. Bevy ECS Tiled does a tiled integration built on top of Bevy ECS Tile Map. It already has support for infinite maps, TSX files, and unloading and reloading maps. And we've talked about UI toolkits quite a bit, and this is a Bevy Lunex 0.2.2 release. Bevy Lunex is a path-based retained layout engine for Bevy entities built around vanilla Bevy ECS and is the UI crate behind the Bevy Punk example. 0.2.2 adds free cursor movement support for gamepads. Bevy Fabulous 0.1.1 aims to provide a framework for encapsulating and coupling a loaded GLTF to its gameplay components without using heavy tooling or opinionated plugins. While Bevy Easy Compute 0.14 is an updated version of the older Bevy App Compute project, aiming to make it easier to write and run compute shaders in Bevy apps. Bevy Caravan 0.1.0 is a procedural macro designed to make expressing query.get statements easier. You can see the entire library's use here in ref caravan, which expands to this code. There's been a decent amount of discussion lately about how to best handle this pattern here, and using a macro is definitely one choice. Next up, we've got Bevy ECS Tilemap 0.14. Bevy ECS Tilemap is an ECS driven tile map rendering library designed to be fast and highly customizable. Each tile is considered a unique entity, and all tiles are stored in the game world. As is typical, the examples directory contains demos for square and hex grids, isometric levels, proof of concept, LDDK, and tiled levels, although you may prefer Bevy ECS LDDK and Bevy ECS tiled, both of which we mention in this issue, chunking, custom materials, and more. Version 0.14 brings it up to date with Bevy 0.14, which normally we wouldn't cover since it's just an update, except this is notable because there wasn't a 0.13 release to crates.io, and quite a few other crates depend on it such as Bevy Picking Tile Map, which is a Bevy Mod Picking backend for Bevy ECS Tile Map. Bevy Mod Picking is picking and pointer events for Bevy, which is in the progress of getting upstreamed. Bevy Rect Ray 0.1 is a minimal 2D layout system that also works in 3D for Bevy. And we just mentioned it, but Bevy ECS LDTK 0.14 is out. For those that don't know, LDTK is a modern user-friendly 2D level editor for tile map based games. And Bevy ECS LDTK, similar to Bevy ECS Tiled, is an ECS-friendly LDTK plugin for Bevy. Definitely check out the README to learn more or start with the book. Bevy ECS LDTK is also built on top of Bevy ECS Tilemap. 
Next up, Sickle UI is a widget library built on top of Bevy's internal Bevy UI, which got its first release to crates.io this week. This is the library that the Bevy Quick Start template authors were suggesting if you wanted to look at a library to use in the game jam. And Bevy Keith is a 2D graphics library with a shiny new tiled SDF renderer. This library offers an immediate mode style API to draw highly dynamic text and shapes in a single or so draw call. With built-in support for anti-aliasing and high DPI rendering, you may be interested in looking at this crate. Which brings us to Bevy Cobweb UI, with Sickle UI getting a crates.io release. This is a newly released UI crate layered on top of Sickle UI. It adds reactivity helpers using Bevy Cobweb and is an asset-driven workflow with advanced localization support. And finally, for the crates this week, we've got Bevy Octopus 0.3. Bevy Octopus is a low-level ECS-driven network plugin for Bevy, supporting TCP, UDP, WebSocket, and JSON bin code auto-transformers. That brings us to our educational section this week. First off, we've got Advancing Pong Part A with physics using Bevy Rapier. This is part two of Zero to Pong, which introduces Bevy Rapier to the project. And last up this week, we've got Component Hooks and Observers in Bevy 0.14. This is a video on component hooks and observers for anyone that hasn't had the time to dig in yet. It covers basic to intermediate usage, as well as a bonus section on the recently merged bubbling events that we talked about in the overview. And of course, if you want to look at the full list that was merged this week, we've got the full list of pull requests. And if you're looking to contribute, we've got the pull requests that were opened this week, as well as issues people are having. This week is the game jam, so some of these issues may give you an opportunity to help somebody with their game jam game. And that's it for this week. I will see you in the next one. Good luck with your game jam games. And I hope you have some fun. See you next week.